HPV testing methods overview and techniques by Dr. Nuzha Hussain. She is currently Dean Professor and Head Pathology, Dr. Ram Manohar Lohia Institute of Medical Sciences, Lucknow, India. Her area of interests are oncopathology and molecular pathology. She has more than 260 publications, five book chapters, 24 research projects as principal investigator. And to mention her awards and achievements, she's had several awards commencing from university medals, including the president of India silver medal, DST Boycast, fellow at Harvard University, visiting fellow at Memorial, Sloan Kettering Cancer Institute US. She's received the Best Pathologist Award from IMA, Women Achiever Awards, etc. She's fellow of the College of American Pathologists, US CAP, Indian College of Pathologists, and member of editorial board and reviewer for several journals. Now over to you, Dr. Nuzat Hussain, Madam. Thank you, Preeti, for your uh, introduction. Uh, we are going to lo look into the aspects of HPV testing, the methodology, and let's overview and critique the techniques that are available to us and what are the possibilities of improving them. So I declare in the beginning, I have no conflict of interest because there are going to be company names taken up here. Um, the uh, pathways, as Dr. Kusum has very, very well uh, shown us are the cytology model, you have the molecular model where you have only the HPV testing, and then you have the hybrid model where you have the core test. Uh, we know that there are these X number of societies which are laying down uh, guidelines for screening and prevention, and we have our own FOGSI which has given really good guidelines as just shown to us by Dr. Mala. So um, if we look at the guidelines, they have been changing over time and they have evolved from cytology to HPV testing. And as of now, your 2020 guideline, the ACS guideline says that you can actually drop uh, the, the cytology and go in only for a primary HPV testing. Of course, that is something that is uh, going to happen in countries where you can afford it until that test becomes affordable for countries like India. So uh, kind of a sad aspect for pathologists, but then as very well pointed out by Dr. Kusum that when you're screening HPV, you are left with a smaller number of, of PAPs to screen and therefore the quality and the output and the sense and spec of that PAP is going to go up. So hybrid testing we are well aware of. Uh, let us look at where the, uh, the uh, high risk HPV testing is kind of going to be applied. So one, it is going to be applied at co-test. One, it's going to be applied at reflex. So that means you go for cytology first and then you do the HPV. Uh, you can genotype. Most of the tests give you mostly 16 and 18. Some of them have added 45. Uh, then you can also use it in follow-up. So can you, the question arises and we'll answer it, use only HPV for a follow-up of a patient who has been treated for a CIN. And then we will discuss more on how HPV alone can be used for a primary screening. Okay, so coming to the HPV testing, the HR HPV, there was a question out there and I posted, these are the types of the, the subtypes of the HR HPV, which are most common, which is 16 and 18. And then you've divided them up into two groups, which are the 2A, which are the probably carcinogenic ones. And then you have the group 2B, which is the possibly carcinogenic one. And the group 2A are these 13 uh, subtypes and, and some uh, pick up 66 from here. And that's how your tests are mostly defined to target this group 2A. Uh, what do you understand by a persistent infection? A persistent infection will be defined as one where you are getting a positive HP, HPV test on two subsequent occasions, uh, three years apart. Why do we need to subtype is the question. Why do we need to know the genotype of the HR HPV? We, if you look at these charts over here, you look at the 16 prevalence, it's the highest, fine. The, the persistence of 16 is also higher than the other subtypes. The other one that persists more is 58. And then the development of CIN is way higher in the 16 as compared to the others. Similarly, if you look at the other less prevalent HRHPVs, you again see these bars here which say that 18, which actually is associated more with glandular lesions, but again, the persistence of 18 is higher 
and so is the development of CIN3 higher in 18 and 39. So uh, if you have a, a woman coming to you with a 16, 18 or a 39, you know that this woman needs to be the kind of follow up, followed up more. This woman is going to develop the CIN earlier as compared to the other women. So the basis of these tests, we need to critically evaluate, you know, the basis that is being used for these tests and as pathologists, as molecular pathologists, we need to understand which test to use depending on the basis. So the early regulator proteins, which a lot of tests utilize are your E1 to E7. Then you have the late structural proteins, which are the, e, the L1 and the L2. And then you have the long control region, the LCR. And most of your tests will target either of these. And some of them use the mRNA and most of them use the DNA of the virus to detect the, the virus there. So the testing platforms can be either a, 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 a DNA detection. It can be a partial genotyping, mainly for the common HRV, uh, the subtypes like 16 and 18. You can have, you have now certain platforms which are doing a full HPV genotyping test, giving you the entire range of the HR, HPVs which are present. And then you have group specific tests which are present. You have tests which are based on E6, E7, the mRNA test. And a classical example of this is the Aptima. And then you can have in situ hybridization used as a technology, which was actually the first technology used the hybrid capture. So why uh, has uh, HPV testing gone above and before the cytology is the reason is that we are looking at a more sensitive test and we know that when we are looking at a population survey, we need a test which is more sensitive rather than more specific. So though the specificity of cytology is higher, uh, the sensitivity of the HPV is about 20 to 40% more than that of cytology and hence the first choice for screening. So uh, how this actually came about, this change in the guidelines was through this Athena study, which was done basically by the Roche Kobas group. And this was addressing the need for advanced HPV diagnostics. Uh, basically, I will not get too much into details, but about 41,000 or 42,000 women were tested of more than 45 years of age. A few of them were also vaccinated. Uh, the, they were then about colposcopic follow-up on, on 9,000 odd women, uh, having the positive HPV cytology, as well as including women who were double negative. And then the sense and spec values actually came out to say that you're getting a better, uh, a better, much better sensitivity with the HPV testing as compared to. That's kind of the report from the Athena study uh, about the sense and the specificity. Uh, and then, uh, so these are now, if you're going to choose practically the FDA approved platforms, then the ones that are available as of now is the BD or Clarity, which is the last one that was added in 2018. The first one that came was the hybrid capture. Then there's Servista, there's Aptima, and there's Cobus. The um, hybrid capture, as I said, was the first platform in 2003. And this is based on those 13 HRHPV genotypes, uh, which are going to be detected. But this platform does not distinguish the 18 and the, uh, the 16 and the 18. It does not genotype, in other words. Uh, it, after uh, some time of study, we realized that it also cross-reacts with 6 and 42. So that's kind of a, a reason for a false positivity. The other thing that you need to look at when you're selecting a test is to know that there should be a cellularity control there. Because what you're doing is you're collecting fluid-based cytology and you're kind of testing it for the DNA. So if there are not enough cells there, your test is going to be negative. So uh, there should be built into the system if you are evaluating a cellularity control and there should preferably be built into the system a method of genotyping so that you can at least define your 16 and 18 as separate. The Servista platform is uh, again a DNA-based platform. Uh, it was FDA approved in 2009. Uh, it cross-reacts with 67 and 70. It uses a cellularity control and it has a separate genotype uh, testing for 16 and 18. The Aptima platform is an mRNA-based platform. Uh, it was approved in 2011. Uh, this cross-reacts with 26, 67, 70 and 82. It does not again have a cellularity control. Uh, and okay, so um, 
we were discussing the uh, the platforms which are available for HPV testing, and uh, just to kind of uh, hurriedly rush through them, we said that they were the uh, BD on 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 Clarity. We had the Hybrid Capture Two, the Servista, the Aptima, and the Cobus. Uh, so we had discussed some of them and then about the BD on Clarity, which is the, the newest platform which is available. And again, this is another platform which is approved for primary HPV screening. So as of now, we have two FDA approved platforms for primary screening. One of them is Cobus and the other one is BD on Clarity. And uh, those of you who are familiar with the liquid uh, uh, cytology, we, uh, the LBC, we know that the BD uses the show path solution and the Cobus actually uses the thin prep. So that's where you need to collect your samples. And um, they have also tried other uh, collecting media, but then this is what is approved as per the FDA approvals. Uh, so if you actually compare these tests, I think we've discussed them, but then this is where we are looking at the sensitivity. And uh, the, uh, the BD on clarity and the Cobus actually compare pretty good on the sensitivity uh, with each other. And the lowest that we have there is of the hybrid capture. So what's the popularity of these, uh, the, the earlier four platforms? This is the way it's been changing. The hybrid capture, which was most used earlier is now going down. So is the Servista. And then the, uh, the Cobus platform, as well as the Aptima platform, they have kind of gone up in usage. So apart from the FDA approved test, the question is that do we really need to use outside the US only FDA approved tests. So um, you, there are also several uh, in-house or, or labo laboratory developed tests which have been used earlier in the past and maybe they are more cost effective. But what I need to emphasize here is that you would need to validate these tests, go through a multi-center validation and actually get some form of, form of, uh, form of approvals be before you can actually apply to testing for patients. Uh, the other platforms that can be used are also certain CE approved platforms which are available and I'll get to them. Uh, the reality about cellularity controls is again something that you might be interested in looking at. And uh, like for example, from the COBUS insert, it says beta globin control, but it doesn't actually differentiate between the targeted cervical cells versus any other nucleated cell. So that's another thing that we need to kind of, um, you know, look at in a, in a, a pragmatic way. The other thing is that when we use HPV for primary testing and which was when initially advocated, there were always questions of cancers which would not be HPV positive. And the second issue is that does the HPV test miss HSIL and cancers? So various studies have been done like the Milan study the Zheng study and several of them here. And I just want you to look at those percentage figures and they vary anywhere, they, they vary anywhere between 4.2 to a 15.5 as to of missing cancers in HSIL. So that's a fairly high number of cases which may be missed uh, using uh, HPV as a primary strategy. So what are the possible reasons for getting a negative HPV? Uh, it could either be a false negative, meaning thereby that you have a very low titer of the HPV, very low copy number. You have an inadequate specimen. You have a poor target or the DNA or the RNA quality. You have inhibiting factors like blood, mucus or lubricant present in your sample. Or the HPV mutations which are occurring while it's progressing to cancer actually do not anymore gel with your primers or with the hybrid capture technology. The true negatives can occur uh, in, in populations, including uh, post-HPV vaccination. The uh, natural selection sometimes of an HPV negative SIL uh, may sometimes miss your positivity. And then the HPV related, unrelated cancers, which are not actually associated with HPV, like the gastric type adenocarcinomas or the uh, cervix. So is the primary HPV testing a new ASQS as far as the screening is concerned? We need to evaluate this again with a pinch of salt. Uh, when we did an ASQS uh, testing, we had a four to 5% rate of positivity, but here we are looking at a positivity rate of 10.5%, meaning thereby that you have doubled the colposcopy rates 
and you are identifying the viral infection and not the dysplasia as emphasized earlier by Dr. Kusum Verma. So uh, the incentive of to do something with colposcopy uh, kind of overwhelms the colposcopy clinics and maybe there is an overtreatment with leap and cone. So these are also again questions that need to be answered before you blindly adopt a primary HPV screening into the population. But definitely it has its advantages in the sense that you're going to have a much higher sensitivity. You're going to decrease the load of the pap smears that are going to come into the pathology. And you're definitely going to increase the quality of the pap smear work when the load is less. And these are just a couple of slides showing you all the other tests which are available, like the Pepelo check, the Onco6, the real time, uh, the, the Abbott platform, the CFIT platform. And this BD1 has now got an FDA approval as well. Uh, so when you have the FHPV typing, you have the C-Gene platform, the Genomica Spain platform, all these are CE marked. So you might consider also picking up these if you're looking at a cost-effective platform there. So um, Dr. Marla has already emphasized the global strategy, the WHO global strategy, where you have a 90% vaccination, a 70% screening, and again, a 90% targeted treatment of the cervical disease. That's the focus for 2030. Um, the HPV testing, when it is popularized, there will again be an issue of who's collecting how and when. So uh, there are several studies now on self-collected HPV testing versus the, the one collected in the OPD. And the meta-analysis actually shows that there's, there's actually a slightly better response when you're getting a home collecting collection done. And the positivity rates really don't differ too much. However, uh, the, um, the issue, uh, the problem that arises is subsequently catching hold of those patients for treatment. And we need, to, we need to understand that the screening program is the testing and the treatment both hand in hand. So the self-collection, uh, the, the people who self-collect sometimes don't land up at the treatment clinics. So that's like an issue. The other thing we need to, again, an interesting area is that whether how much the HPV test can be used when you are treating a case of CIN. And the HPV cure, uh, test of cure is something that is an only HPV test, which is used after a patient who has been treated for CIN. And this uh, co-test, uh, the co-test negative, however, has the best prognosis. So still one would say that one should do a co-test when we are looking at a patient who is post-CIN. So just summarizing the FDA approval, for only HPV screening is now an acceptable option in, a, in addition to cytology and co-testing uh, on either the COBAS uh, FDA recognized or the, the BD platforms. Um, despite the appeal of the primary HPV testing, as I have brought up, there are several unresolved issues that remain. Uh, the HPV negative cancers are not rare and the Athena trial was definitely underpowered for them. And uh, further, so uh, we need to conclude is that maybe we can add something new like DNA methylation or miRNA or something that actually points towards cancer to the HPV test so that we can actually diagnose the presence of the virus along with a malignant transformation, in which case it would actually be equal to a co-test. And the HPV tests uh, are more automated and more reproduci reproducible than cytology, but by no means are they perfect. And none of these platforms will identify HSIL and CIN2 so, or cancer. So those are the new approaches. And thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Hussein, for your valuable input and really informative session for all of us. Thank you so much. <laughs>